The Hot Toys Hall of Armor first teased in fall of 2011. Then a year later, around December of 2012, it went into pre-order status for one six scale collectors. Arriving with mixed results, uh, some negative, but overall positive in the end, I personally never really enjoyed them, or to that matter, was never really attached to them. They had flaws that I personally just was not a big fan of. On occasion, when they would even line up, they relied on a daisy chain connector uh, feature that sometimes wouldn't work, ensuring power distribution to the remaining units just would fail or be shoddy or just, it just wouldn't work. It was a bulky diorama display. The center pylons weren't even connected to the main power source and required separate AA batteries, now, which boggled the mind since not having them on meant you needed to rely on the low power LEDs to illuminate the suits, which in my opinion did a piss poor job in really showcasing how beautiful these armors were. The included acrylic panels weren't very clear and the included vinyl stickers were very tacky. So I was boggled when Hot Toys decided to reissue them in 2018 without making any improvements to the already faulty R&D from the original design. It honestly blew my mind. The same crappy unit from yesteryear brought back with no improvements. Now, back in 2012, when I was deciding to commission my own Hall of Armor, I didn't know Hot Toys would make their own. Would it have stopped my commission if I had known that? Yeah, it, it absolutely would have. Now, I understand though, I did purchase quite a few of these units, these Hot Toy Hall of Armor units. In fact, I built a three-story megalopolis of all the existing Iron Man Hall of Armor suits I, I currently had at the time. I needed help to manage my ever-growing Hot Toys collection. Now, later in time, I did realize, though, through experience, uh, that they were more of a burden than a benefit. So I sold most of them, keeping a few as a reminder of what could have been. Now, years later, uh, we have the technology, and I have the skills to bring these units, well, up to code and back to life, USB hack style. What really blows me away is that I've done a lot of USB hack projects and doing this specific USB hack project on the Hall of Armor actually turned out pretty easy. Now you can see when you just remove the screws, uh, the, uh, the little cheap LEDs that are powered by the, uh, the three AA batteries. Uh, they're pretty bright. The problem is, is that the light is not evenly distributed and then when you have them on, it doesn't look that great. It doesn't give it that cinematic feel. But like I said, that was 10 years ago. Technology has improved. In fact, technology not only has improved, it's gotten cheaper. The key ingredient to making this work is Cobb LED, COB, circuit onboard LED, flexible, low powered, cool to the touch, super bright, helps to distribute the light. Now, if you're savvy with a little bit of soldering, this would probably be an easy project for you. If you've never even attempted this before, I can understand how it can be a little bit intimidating. So I'm gonna do the best I can here. That is the 30 gauge wire there. Uh, and I believe I have this on my Amazon store front too. This wire, I think it's uh, I think it's $20 for like 100 feet. This thing is just wonderful. Uh, it's very easy to solder. And I stripped a little, little bits of plastic on there and you can kind of see where I have my little alligator clips and a little, uh, a couple dabs, a little bit of soldering and it just, it holds. I, I, this is, I think my discovery of the Cobb LED strips is just fantastic because it just opens the possibilities to so many projects. I just cut a little bit of shrink tube in there and I added some right at the, uh, right where I soldered it just to help protect it. Make sure it'll last and it doesn't, you know, through time wear off. My uh, heat gun on there helps keep those solder points. And then test. Always do test. And I, I uh, have a battery pack uh, that just spits out 5 volts. Now, these existing LEDs, I 
you can, I mean, you can throw them away, I guess. I, I don't feel like it needs to. So what I did, I just removed them. They're, they're not even like glued onto the actual panel. So I'm just gonna move them to the side and just leave them right there. They're, they're just, there's no really, there's no logical reason for me to cut them off. I could, but they're not. The Cobb LED uh, comes with the 3M sticky back. So, and, and you know what's crazy is, is that there's even a molded panel on to the actual uh, pylon on there and it sticks perfectly. That's what kills me. I wonder if at one point in time they had thought about doing it, but uh, I took advantage of it. Uh, so I'm gonna do a little bit of drilling here, a little micro drill in there, because that's where I'm gonna run the actual wires from the uh, the strip that I just soldered. And again, once I ran the wires through the panel, just keep testing, keep that, because there's nothing, for at least for me, more frustrating than reinstalling everything back and then having something that I had missed or just wasn't properly connected. So that works. Rinse, repeat, uh, rinse, repeat, and uh, just redo the steps for the other panels. Now, what I'm doing a little bit differently here because I thought at one point, I'm like, well, you could probably solder wires to the actual battery terminals. But with the beautiful thing with the Hall of Armors is that they do give you an external power outlet on there the dc 4.5 volts which i'm just gonna run five volts on there there is a transistor inside there don't over exceed don't overdo past five volts and you should be fine i have tons of surplus cables i i think this specific cable is a it's probably an extra cable that came with the module case that i'm just not using i just need the tip that fits inside there that's what i'm cutting off on there that way i can just pump in the power through there. The only thing I'm really doing differently is I'm just gonna uh, just connect everything together. And there it is, the red and the black, positive and the negative. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more light. Uh, the center plastic tubing on there, I'm gonna give it a, a, a signature glow, a, a, a hue. So I this is my second time. I did get experience doing my first Hall of Armor, but what I'm gonna do differently now is I'm gonna drill a hole through the plastic tubing because that's where I'm gonna run the wire. Once I solder the uh, the cob strip, that's where I'm gonna fish the actual power supply uh, uh, wire. I have quite an assortment of different colors. I have like a light blue, dark blue, red. I have a, a, a green and uh, it's blinking like that because uh, these cob LEDs are, are, are can be finicky if you don't give them enough power. And, and my battery packs that I'm using are just really, really old. If I attach it to a, a newer power battery pack that I have, it'll work just fine. So once I give every specific Cobb LED its own little direct current on there, it works just fine. And there's light blue, green, and red. And you're asking, well, why the different colors? Well, you'll see later in the video. <laughs> and you can kind of see where I kind of went ahead. I soldered the wires to the, uh, the Cobb strip pop it on there and you don't want the bright light facing towards you you want the actual uh, the light to reflect the back panel of the actual hall of armor and I, you don't have to drill i thought about it i'm like no there's a little you can just run the wires through the actual panels through the side panels it, it's you're it's you're not even going to see it once you have the suit and everything in there now i'm thinking the mark 26 right from the house party protocol he has that uh beat down green hue i'm thinking that'll rock i'm thinking that'll work all right give him a little bit of love from the house party protocol and uh once you uh slip the uh, suit in there it just it pops it comes to life yeah it's really really cool this was probably 40 minutes for me i i gotta i gotta confess though i mean if i knew if i had the experience now back then what i could have done with these things i probably wouldn't have been so quick to uh, get rid of them but i mean overall i am happy the hall of armors at the time served their purpose and i love that blue hue uh, i just i'm actually pretty impressed and how vibrantly well lit they came out and they all it's just one five volt plug usb uh, for each of them got my little battery pack back there and it, I thought it came out pretty well
Yeah. <laughs> little red and blue there. Little Americana look. Yeah, they came out really, really nice. I gotta say, I was very impressed. Wow. Now, I have three signature Hall of Armors. I, I don't really want to keep them in my collection. I'm quite happy with my custom Hall of Armor, and I kind of like the suits just being lined up in front display. So these three customizable Hot Toys Hall of Armors, USB hacked, I'm just going to sell them. I'm going to sell them. Uh, just kind of send them out into the world. I'm not going to pair them up, though. So if you are interested, send me a DM on Instagram. And um, if I decide I want to sell it to you, you'll, you'll earn the right from the different colors. Uh, and again, I'm not selling them as a set. I kind of want them to go out like Imperial probe droids out in the world. Uh, I don't want one or the other actually ever interacting uh, with each other. Uh, so that's the idea. They were fun, but it's not gonna suit my collection um, in its current state. So hopefully one of you three out there will be able to benefit from it. Like, subscribe. Thanks for watching.